This is a recording of my conversation with Simon Moss, CEO of AASD. We discuss AASD's unsupervised learning approach and its applications and impact in financial services and other industries. We cover Simon's views on the future of AI deployment in enterprise and its implications. I'm talking to Simon Moss, CEO of ASD AI. ASD is part of Symphony, a private holding group for leading B2B AI companies. ASD's platform enables enterprises to develop and deploy intelligent data and AI-based applications at scale. Simon, welcome. Please uh, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about uh, Symphony's mission and uh, ASD's journey. Thanks, Chip. Appreciate the uh, the invitation to join. Uh, Yazdi, uh, 37 patents, a true innovator of AI, been around for about 10 years, focused primarily on unsupervised learning and the discovery of what we call unknown unknowns. In other words, malignancies, attacks, opportunities that nobody's ever thought about. So very different to what traditional machine learning has been uh, been focused on. Uh, Grew rather well, uh, and then last year was acquired by Symphony Technology, and we're integrating now with multiple other components, focusing on industrial and IoT, focusing on healthcare. Um, We've spent about $100 million developing this. We've developed it over 10 years. It is in global production around the planet with some of the most sophisticated firms in the world, which I'll cover in a few minutes when, when you talk about use cases. Simon, what do you think will be the role and impact of AI in the enterprise? It's a delicate question to answer because I think there is too much hype and too much uh, exaggerated promise of AI. Um, We we really are in the hype cycle. It is being dominated by people that talk gobbledygook and alchemy around data science and mathematics. And, And most things that we see out there are data science, open source engines sitting on or sitting underneath a very clever UI and a decent business case. Uh, So to be perfectly honest, the promise of much of AI is still highly embryonic and yet to be proven in the enterprise. I, I think we see some very interesting wins around natural language processing. I think the COIN project at JP Morgan Chase was was an exemplary project. Uh, I, I think that we're seeing some very interesting plays in in the evolution from business intelligence into machine learning environments, uh, but nothing particularly um, uh, expansive from a scale perspective. And so I, I think that AI is facing the same issues as every technology innovation faces, which is the obstacles of enterprise IT are profound, are enormous. When we talk about scale and volume and resiliency and concurrency and security, all of these things that are often considered incredibly boring, um, they are significantly holding back uh, innovation, correctly, I might add. Challenge number one is it's, it's full of enormous ideas. The entrepreneurial engine is just crazy around AI at the moment. The, the, you know, some silly money going into it. Uh, some of the valuations that we see is, is ridiculous. And, you know, the wheat from the chaff will be separated when you start talking about AI at scale. The acceleration to enterprise acceptance, I think, is going to be significantly quicker than other technology innovations. So I can see within the next five years that we really will have significant disruption in large amounts of manual processes uh, in the middle and back offices of financial institutions, insurance companies. In, in a whole transformation of, of the, the use of robotic process automation or higher order RPA, where AI and RPA begins to synthesize. And, and, and within the next decade, I think that we will be looking at a wholesale change of the white, many of the white collar industries. So moving on to ASD, what specific problems does ASD try to solve? We like complicated things. So, you know, we're the company that understood that diabetes was not one disease, but three. We're the companies, the company that changed the survivability of global breast cancer through a new pathology analysis. You know, we're the ones that you know work with the, you know, the U.S. Air Force around the F-35 supply chain fix. We like complicated problems. We have an inverse relationship to data uh, compared to everybody else. Most firms, because you know they are a 
traditional supervised learning engine, they say, hey, I have to teach the software to do something. And I teach it through example. So that's the vast majority of machine learning. In other words, you are, you are um, uh, uh, propagating your own knowledge into the, the machine. In other words, it becomes a force multiplier for you, which is great, incredibly powerful, if you know what you're looking for. We are the complete opposite to that design paradigm, which is, Mr. Customer, give us all your data as much as possible, labeled and unlabeled, structured and unstructured, data at rest in the database, data in motion uh, through your streaming, data in use, all your user telemetries or customer telemetries. Because what we want to do, we believe that an enterprise's data problem is not size. We believe it's complexity. And complexity needs a different organizing principle. And for us, the organizing principle is shape. The shape of data has meaning. And so we have invented and pioneered and deployed globally a thing called topological analysis, which essentially brings in enormous amounts of data and builds topologies. And almost like, um, almost topographical, for want of a better term, almost like a map showing peaks and troughs and valleys. And those peaks and troughs and valleys are behaviors of interest. And so we focus at the discovery of unknown unknowns. So most rule systems, reporting systems, BI systems, look for known knowns. They're writing reports about stuff that you know. AI engines are looking for known unknowns, or forgive me, unknown knowns. In other words, I know what I'm looking for, but I don't know where it is. We are discovering true new events, new arbitrage opportunities, new attacks from a malignancy and money laundering and fraud perspective, and new opportunities to optimize alpha in liquidity analysis or credit. So what are some of the practical applications and uh, solutions, and uh, who uses uh, ASD today? We, we use very extensively in the pharmaceutical re research world, um, uh, drug, cancer, uh, you know, where we're really looking, where we, it truly is a discovery journey to try and understand different pathologies, different impacts on, on, on drug combinations, uh, different lifestyle elements uh, relative to the uh, uh, metastasization of cancer. Uh, we have a very big penetration in the academic in, in mark, uh, business. The genesis of the company was obviously the Stanford Math Lab. We have a very good penetration of industrial and obviously healthcare, but our big focus at the moment is financial services. And there, as I said, financial crime. You know, we are not a system that looks for a needle in a haystack. That's easy. You know, let's be clear. Financial criminal doesn't want to be a needle in a haystack. He wants to be a needle in a stack of needles. He wants to look the same as everybody else. That requires true elegance in mathematical design to identify that incredibly weak signal, that signal in the noise that nobody else can find. Uh, clients that we can talk about, we have a very, we have an amazing, fantastic relationship with HSBC, we have a fantastic relationship with Standard Chartered Bank. Um, you know, th these are big, complex, uh, trillions of transaction firms that we really enjoy working with. Uh, multiple other banks that I'm not allowed to talk about, Obviously, uh, we're also having a, we have an excellent relationship with the deployment of topological data at the U.S. Air Force Labs. From a financial services perspective, it's financial crime. You know, and, and if I go on a diatribe, I apologize. You know, my, my background is financial crime, and the five companies that focus on transaction monitoring: SaaS, uh, Norcom Detica, Fiserv Net Economy, Oracle Mantis, and Nice Actimize, are essentially all the same thing. They are rules engines looking for rules that were built based on understanding crime in the 1980s and 1990s. Well, it's 2020 now. They're being outmaneuvered. And they're being outmaneuvered. And what that means is the genesis of, of that outmaneuvering is creating huge amounts of false positives. So you've now got operational productivity issue. But more importantly, you've got systems that are running rules that are frankly the efficacy of those rules is very weak in, in understanding and discovering new types of attacks. Those attacks, Chip, are unknown unknowns. We don't know what they are. We don't know how it's happening. And so we are doing multiple projects now with, with clients to develop a brand new 
set of criminal rules to identify behaviors and attacks. And then the second area is the complete counter to that is the generation of alpha, in which we are bringing our customers' liquidity and customer balances into the system to, to, to look at the topology of the performance of the customer to allow, allow the bank to optimize their liquidity position and to identify and predict contagion from credit risk into liquidity challenges, which is essentially what the banks had in 2008, 2009 around mortgage. But now with the crisis that we have at the moment, we have an order of magnitude bigger challenge, large amounts of data, very complicated problem, large amounts of causal and, and interdependencies, um, and, and, and therefore, you know, very significant uh, opportunity for a firm like us. Can you zoom in into some of the benefits that uh, the clients get from the use cases that you just described? Yeah, I won't give names, but I'll, I'll talk a couple of use cases through. So let, let's stay with financial crime for a minute. So we, we talked about, you know, one of the business problems is all these false positives. So we're working with several clients to say, well, how do you solve that? And, and we are tuning their existing transaction monitoring system, and we're increasing their ability by about 50%, taking pressure off their fraud investigation unit. At the same time, we're running what's called broad analysis projects to actually identify behaviors and attacks and criminal malfeasance and other nefarious activities that they weren't aware of. We are increasing the number of alerts, relevant alerts, not false positives, relevant alerts of identifying new attacks by about 10 to 20% with our clients. Uh, I, I won't go in, into it too much, but we recently found almost $45 billion worth of, of tax evasion. And, and certainly, you know, one area that we're exploring now is stimulus fraud in the US. The US over seven weeks is putting close to $3 trillion worth of additional cash into, into the economy. 27% of GDP, huge fraud opportunity, huge synthetic identity uh, 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 opportunism, huge amounts of organized crime. Crime, then on the other side on liquidity, and we did a project which you know, generated over $100 million worth of additional profit through recalibrating the bottom up regulatory requirements and the top down operating balance requirements and, and bringing them closer together, providing full diligence, full referential e explainability to the local regulator and allowing them to manage their liquidity and move operational balances out of regulatory capital into a higher return uh, structure. Simon, how do companies work with the uh, as this platform? How does an implementation look like? Yeah, you know, obviously with GDPR, with CCPA and data security, the vast majority of our deployments are going to be on-prem. Uh, we are fully cloud native, so we're delighted to put it in the cloud for the client. So we could, it can go onto AWS or Google Cloud instance behind, behind the firewall. Uh, deployment critical path, uh, the ROI is about three months for the deployment. What makes up the challenge of a, of a enterprise deployment? Well, number one is you know, getting assimilating and getting the product in the right place from a hardware perspective. Well, as we've said, we can get some instance on the cloud. If you've got a Hadoop data lake, preferably Cloudera or Hortonworks, we're golden. Two, 70% of a project is the assimilation and homogenization of data. We covered that earlier. We don't want you to do that. We just want you to put the data into a data lake. Our AI engine will homogenize that for you. It will create a data model that is an exact reflection of the way you're doing business. And then TDA begins to run and begins to find all these interesting, unique behaviors or unknown unknowns. And then that's passed out to the, the business unit. We just finished a very large project with a telecommunications company in Japan. Three months, it had paid for itself within the first 15 days. Uh, we expect ROI and we will sign service level agreements with our clients to have the ROI within three months of post-deployment. Simon, final question. How do you think uh, organizations and jobs will change once uh, AI is deployed in enterprise? We're going to have a wholesale change. Personal relationship will become even more important. Relationship managers will need to understand their customer to a significantly more intimate and regular 
uh, intimate way with a much more regular cadence. Customers, uh, bank customers, will be armed with their own tools, uh, will be able to understand the market in a much better way. And so uh, AI is incredibly important there, particularly high, uh, high efficacy, rapid decision support structures. Uh, the, the second area is the supporting of all of these uh, 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 transactions within the trading floor. Uh, I, I think we can see some really unique arbitrage opportunities and arbitrage products coming out of the prop trading. Uh, I think we can see some really, really interesting new transaction types being generated. And, and I think that will be created because we're going to see a lot more market utilities. I think the markets are going to connect together. I think blockchain has a really interesting future. The middle and back office, the manual paperwork processes, the manual reconciliation processes are going to be automated. Simon, this was great. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Appreciate you inviting me.